Hello, welcome to the Horror of It All Movie Podcast. I'm Eric. This time I'm going to be talking about my top 10 favorite horror movies of 1985. Now that's a kind of big year for me in movies. Not just horror, but in general. My favorite movie of all time came out that year. Back to the Future, in case anybody didn't know that. <laughs> um, I technically consider 1, 2, 3, 1 movie. I don't know if anybody else does, but that's what I do. Anyway, uh... I have every other year before 1985 in on my channel, uh, if you want to check those out. And I will be doing, hopefully sooner than later, um, 86 all the way to 89. Um, and then after that, I may do like a top 10 of 90s or 70s. I don't know yet. But I definitely wanted to do 80 because it's my favorite year for horror or movies in general, really. I mean, I love 70s. I love 90s. Um, I love movies from all times, but I think 1980s are my favorite. Uh, so, I guess I'll, without further ado, dive right in here. Um, my number 10 is kind of, I guess, surprising for me when I did a top 10, only because I'm not a big fan of vampires. I like certain vampire movies, like from Dust Till Dawn and stuff, but to me those are like demon vampires, kind of. But, um... I've always liked this one. Number 10, Fright Night. Um, this edition that you're looking at is Eureka. Um, it is com it is unlocked. It's ABC. I don't know if you can still get it. But, uh, but yeah. Um, I even like the sequel. The sequel I don't think is as good as the original. And I know some people will be like, well, yeah, it never is. I disagree with that. But uh, I'm a fan of a lot of sequels more than the originals. But it's pretty cool. Um you don't know much about Fright Night, uh, it's basically about this, um, I don't want to call him a kid, I guess he's more of a teenager, um, notices that he has a new neighbor and he's a bit mysterious and he keeps, he just keeps his eye on him almost like a rear window type situation until he starts noticing that maybe he's a vampire. And then he goes and talks to his friend, um, who is played by Roddy McDowell of Planet of the Apes fame, um, because he does like this late night horror show type thing, um, and it ensues from there. The synopsis is as follows, even though I kind of gave a gist, I don't know why I did it like that, but anyway, he's sweet, sexy, and he love, and he likes to get in late. You might think he's the perfect neighbor, but before inviting him in for a nightcap, there's something you should know. Jerry prefers prefers his drinks warm, red, and straight from the jugular. It's Fright Night, a horrific howl starring Chris 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 Sheridan, uh, who I've met before. Uh, he's he's also in like um, he's in a lot of things, but he's also in Child's Play um, as a seductive vampire. And William Ragsdale as the frantic teenager struggling to keep Jerry's deadly fangs out of his neck. Only 17 years old, Charlie Brewster um, knows Jerry's blood-curdling secret. Um, but yeah, and then from there, and he his girlfriend is play, uh, Amy is played by um, Amanda Bierce of Mary with Children fame. Um, but I'm going on and on about this. Like, people don't really know. I mean, some people might not have seen it, but um, it is one of those movies that's not that obscure, really. I don't think it's obscure. I don't think Friday Night's obscure. What am I saying? But, but yeah, it's a good. Um, oh, if you're curious, I had. Uh, I I have. I don't remember how I acquired this. This doesn't come with it. This is from the Twilight Time. I um, I've had that too. Um, I think I might still, but I put it in here because this is the better edition. I don't remember, though. Um, but anyway, yeah, number 10, Fright Night. Number 9 is definitely more obscure, and uh, a lot of Vinegar Syndrome fans may not be too into it. I don't know. I really like it. However, I do like the... Well, I'll get into that. My number 9 is Evils of the Night. Alien vampires have just landed from outer space in search for one substance the teenage needs survival. Teenage blood. 
I messed that up. Substance they need to survive. Teenage blood. Is this... I don't think it's a common theme throughout. It just happens to be these two. But, um, but yeah. This is Evils of the Night. Um, it's definitely something else. Um, it's an earlier one. 129. Now, this movie is kind of... I don't even know how to describe it. Because Evil Town, the VSA, is also... Uh, is kind of like... Stems from this in some way, like the story's a little different or whatever, but uh, I prefer Evil Town, but Evils of the Night is a lot of fun, I think, it's not the greatest movie in the world, but it's a, it's a fun one, um, it's, let's see, uh, Aliens vs. Sex Obsessed Teens in Meriden Rushdom's Outrageous Evils of the Night, beautiful young women have been disappearing and no one can figure out how or where they go but in the darkness the sinister forces are lurking a group of aliens uh, have been draining the local youth of their blood so that they can live forever um, it's kind of kind of sort of an evil town like that but it's not uh, it, it, I don't think it's like a, an alien thing but again I don't remember but I know there's a connection with it I wish I just could remember more um, but anyway yeah number nine Evils of the Night. Alright. Um, I could have I could show a number of releases for this. I showed this one. I have not got the 4K, but I do love this movie. Um, and I'm talking about Pandemonium. A pandemonium. Phenomena. What a good pandemonium. <laughs> Uh, phenomena um, from Dario Argento um, which is basically about a girl named Jennifer played by Jennifer Connelly who can control insects with her mind and Donald Pleasanton's in it it's really interesting um, this is a quick synopsis of it uh, Jennifer daughter of the world renowned movie star arrives in a so called Swiss Transylvania to attend an exclusive girls' school. However, a vicious killer is targeting um, pupil, uh, poop, uh, pupils, um, and sleepwalker Jennifer finds herself in the assassin's highlights, uh, headlights, where her nocturnal wagderings, wow, uh, <laughs> cause her to witness the death of a fellow pupil. Um, but uh, aided with a wow I anyway you know <laughs> um, yeah I'm, I'm just gonna say she's she's aided by Donald Pleasance and um, her own uncanny ability to communicate telepathically with insects Jennifer sets out a track to, to track down the killer before she herself becomes the latest victim I'm sorry I fumbled over that, but some of the, some of the words they use on this are a bit like what? Anyway, um, but yeah, this is on 4K now. Um, there's a lot of releases of this. It's also known in America as Creepers. However, I believe it's like what 20 minutes, a half hour shorter. No thanks. <laughs> um, I remember seeing Creepers originally when I was younger, and then I found out years later that Phenomena is the well the the quintess the version you want like the um the quintessential version um but yeah number eight phenomena boy i stumbled over that pretty good <laughs> but whatever all right number seven i don't have a single release on blu-ray so i'll just show the box set which i did on 19 on the last one night Mayor on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. One of the least favorite, if not least favorite, of some people. Uh, my wife loves it. It's probably her, it might be her favorite. Right there with uh, Freddy's Dead, another one that a lot of people don't like. I fucking love Freddy's Dead. Um, sometimes if my camera is a different angle in my room, I have a giant Fre Freddy's Dead poster right behind the head. But um, A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2 is definitely a different one. 
Some people say it has like gay undertones and this and that, and fine. Like when I was younger, I never picked, I never really picked up on that. I kind of get what the like certain lines and stuff, but it's it's still a good sequel. It's not my favorite sequel. Um, it's further down my list, but um, if anybody's ever curious about that list, I haven't made a video, but I do have a letterbox. Um, I can put that in the description if. I remember <laughs> otherwise it's it is on my channel and everything you can click the link um, but yeah uh, it's basically just it's one of the more different sequels uh, it's basically about uh, a teenager Jesse and Freddie is basically trying to take over him so he can do his bidding for him in reality um, so he's like inside of him and there are lines that pertain to the whole gay thing uh, for that but hey um, it, it's different, it's fun, um, I like all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, but, um, yeah, so, yeah, we are Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, my number 6, without any ado, or further ado, even though I didn't, <laughs> Larry Cohen's The Stuff. Um, the Stuff is definitely a lot of fun if anybody hasn't seen it. Uh, it's basically about this stuff that looks like fluff. And people uh, eat it and it basically mind controls them in a way almost like body snatcher sort of. But with this uh, mind altering addictive substance that again looks to me like fluff. Uh, if you don't know a fluff, like fluff or nut or like you put it, like peanut butter and fluff, things like that. Um, the stuff is the new dessert taking supermarket shelves by storm. It's delicious, low in calories, better still, doesn't stain the family's carpet. What's not to like? Well, the start, well, for a start, it has a life of its own, and we're not talking friendly li live bacteria. Young Jason seems to be the only one who doesn't love the stuff. In fact, he won't go anywhere near it. After having seen the pudding crawling around in the fridge one night, what's more, everyone who eats the stuff is starting to act really weird. Now teaming up with the wisecracking industrial saboteur, Mo, Jason must put a stop to the stuff and the organization behind it or face gooey, gloopy demise. Coming courtesy of horror, uh, a tour, Larry Cohen of It's Alive fame and Maniac Cop, and he, he's done a lot of movies. Q, uh, The Winged Serpent, um, God Told Me To. I, I love Larry Cohen, and this is definitely one of my favorites. I don't think it's my favorite movie of his, but um, are you eating it, or is it eating you? Number six, The Stuff. Alright, this next one, the cover is actually for parts one and two of the movie, but we're into the top five now. I'm talking about Lamberto Bava's Demons. Now this is the 4K that Synapse put out, amazing um, edition. If you have the Arrow one, it's pretty much the same, um, but this one has one and two. Um, two will probably be on the list, uh, for its year, but, um, I love Demons. If you're not familiar with Demons, check out the Joe Bob episode, uh, where he did Demons. I think it's still up on Shudder. I haven't checked recently, but those movies do go in and out. Sometimes they come back, sometimes, um, not, um, but... It was on his first marathon. It's basically about these people who get these special tickets and they're invited. Hey, actually, I'll show that. And they get invited to the screening of this horror movie. And um, as time goes on, you start realizing people are changing and they're turning into demons. It's kind of like a zombie S type movie, but demon-wise, this is the ticket. This comes in this edition, if you can find it. Um, it's really, really cool. Um... But yeah, I, I absolutely love Demons. Um, I love Demons 2 just as much, to be honest. Um, but it's definitely a fun movie. And it's basically about all the people that are in the theater 
gradually turning into demons, and will anybody survive, you know? Uh, and it's Italian, and the only official demons, if anybody is curious, if they look it up, is Demons 1 and 2. Right now I'm talking about demons, but uh, there are many other demons, movies, demons movies. Some of them are really good, in my opinion, but I also love most things, if not almost all things, <laughs> uh, Italian. Um, but anything after 2, if you see a Demons 3, I think that's the church, uh, it goes on forever. But Joe Bob explains it pretty well uh, on that episode. Um, none of those are official sequels. It's just a typical like uh, Italian fashion of just calling something a sequel to be able to sell the movie better. And you know what? It's not really a bad idea, but it is deceiving in a way. But hey, you still get to see a horror movie. It's not like it's, um, you know, it's they're not completely pulling the wool over your eyes and you get some kind of Disney movie or something. Absolutely not. But anyway, my number five, 1985, of 1985, is Lamberto Baba's Demons. And there's tons of great special features on there. Um, and this is 4K. Uh, you can also get it in just Blu-ray. Um, all right, number four. Got some uh, quite a bit of zombies coming up, but uh, in this amazing edition, I am talking about my number four of my top ten of 1984. Reanimator, of course, Reanimator. It has to be on the top ten list of 1985 horror movies. Um, one of the most widely popular horror movies of all time, Stuart Gordon's endearing splatter comedy classic reanimator returns to Blu-ray in a stunning 4K restoration packed with special features. Anyway, when a medical student, Dan Kane, advertises for a roommate, he finds one in the form of Herbert West. Initially, a little eccentric, it, it, uh, it's some... It some becomes clear, it should have said soon becomes clear, it says some, um, that West entertains some seriously outlandish theories, especially the possibility of reanimating the dead. It's not long before Dan finds himself under West's influence and embodies its serious ghoulish experiments which threaten to go widely out of control. Based on H.P. Lovecraft's classic Terror Tale, Herbert West's Reanimator, and featuring outstanding, uh, standout performances from, well, outstanding as well, from Jeffrey Combs, a uh, deliriously deranged West's Reanimator remains the definitive example of 80s splatter mayhem and one of the horror genre's finest hours. Other amazing performances in this by Barbara Crampton, this edition is absolutely amazing. I mean, this book, you can still find this. It's it's out of print, but and it's it, this is the Arrow edition. Really, really, really cool. A bunch of cards. Whoops. Uh, a book and some cards. This is the edition. Pretty cool. But if you love Reanimator and you don't have a really cool edition, this is the one I recommend. So number four, Reanimator. And um, one little thing I wanted to add when I met Jeffrey Combs, um, I didn't know what I wanted him to write or anything on my little 8x10 that he signed. And it was perfect because it was one of my favorite lines. Cat dead, details later. <laughs> Reanimator. Of course, Reanimator. How would that not be on a list of 1980s movies? My number three. We're getting down there. Now, in the past couple yeah uh, most of them anyone that come has a Friday the 13th in there it's usually number one and I don't mean to be um, obvious or whatever it's just it's Friday the 13th so they're my favorite you know there's a lot of my favorite horror movies but this time I have one at number three and I'm talking about Friday the 13th part five a new beginning now it doesn't mean I like it any less it just means that two and one are 
in my opinion, masterpieces. Now, uh, Friday the 13th Part 5 is also one that's on some people's list kind of low, but I love it. I mean, it's sleazy. It's um, the, the kills are pretty fucking great. Um, and you'll have it with that sle really sleaziness. I mean, the director did direct porn, uh, porn so um, which I'm fine with. I don't care. Um, but yeah, I do really like Five. Um, it is pretty high on my list of my uh, ranking of my Friday the 13th movies. You can also check that out on my channel um, that I did with, with my wife, and she did her ranking. And this one's kind of high for her, too, so we really do like Part Five. Um, Reggie the Reckless is awesome in it. Um, the, the, I won't give it away in case anybody's new, but, uh, there is, uh, definitely something different about this one when it comes to Jason. Someone is slashing people just like the killer Jason Voorhees. Could it be that the notorious madman has returned from the grave? Tommy Jarvis has been transferred to a secluded halfway house. Now, whoever is murdering the residents in the town has moved on to the institution where no one is safe from being sliced and diced. This is the fifth scary installment in the Friday the 13th saga. If you like the first four, you'll love Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning. I agree with that. Some others won't, but my number three, Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning. Um... I also have heard some people, like, initially not liking it because of the whole not Jason angle. Um, <laughs> I won't go too deep into that. Uh, but also I've heard people over time, they they seem to like it more when the more they watch it. And personally, I don't know if I'm one of those people because I've always loved it. So, my number three, Friday the 13th, part five. Now, my number two is actually in my top five favorite horror movies of all time. Which you would... It's kind of weird considering number one isn't in my top five. But for the year, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I'm talking about Return of the Living Dead. I love this movie. I adore this movie. And as I said, it's in my top five of favorite horror movies of all time. I've even... Uh, I did a podcast with my brother... On his channel, The Horror Inside, if you want to check that out. It's also on, uh, I saved it into a playlist on my channel. Um, but yeah, I, I love Return of the Living Dead. The only thing I don't like about it is the whole brains angle. And not because of the movie, but because of the whole thing that that's kind of what it's turned into. As I call it, the Walmart generation. I don't know why I call it that. <laughs> I'm not like that kind of person. So, scratch that. Um, the... People that don't understand, like, don't know horror, like, like, horror people know horror, they always say, oh, zombies eat brains, zombies don't eat fucking brains, okay? In the Return of the Living Dead series, yes, they do, but on the other hand, I'm thinking, do those people even know that movie, or is it just, like, a pop culture thing that they just assume they eat brains? Anyway, this is definitely a fun movie. It's not like any other zombie movie. Um, I like the whole series. Two, uh, three is a very close second. I like two, but it, if I had to do like one, two, three, it'd be the last one. Uh, four and five, I don't think are that bad, but they're nothing compared to like the first three. Absolutely not. Um, but yeah, uh, directed by Dan O'Banion of Aliens fame, and um, yeah, so uh, John Russo wrote part of the story. And um, I talk about that a bit on my brother's podcast where he got the of the living dead and George Romero got of the dead when they kind of split because John Russo did work with uh, George Romero earlier on in his career and did Night of the Living Dead with him. Um, but if you haven't seen Return of the Living Dead, I mean, it's Return of the Living Dead. It's so much fun. Um it, but it, it can throw some people off because honestly it's a comedy as well um they talk uh they they basically decompose and still fall apart but yet they they still talk and then there is a there is a scene where they catch uh or get uh 
torso of a woman, really. Um, and they tie her to a table at the morgue. And they basically asked her questions. And she said uh, she can feel herself rot. That's why they need human flesh. Because it, it, it makes the pain go away. Oh my god. I gotta watch Return of the Living Dead again. It's just... Yeah, I've watched it since I was a kid, and it's, like I said, one of my absolute favorite horror movies of all time, let alone number two in my top ten favorite horror movies of 1985, Return of the Living Dead. Um, did I do a... I can't remember. If I did a whole uh, episode about Return of the Living Dead, I think I did. Um, I know, it's. It, it, uh, I'm, I'm blanking. Uh, if I did, it's on my channel. I don't know why I'm blanking. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway, even if I didn't, I do talk a lot about it on various episodes. Um, number two. Now, before I get to number one, I figured I'd do some honorable mentions. Just kind of, kind of, um, skim through them. This is a nice, uh, terrible movie that, um... Vinegar Syndrome released, and it was actually one of the few of theirs, because if you watch my Vinegar Syndrome episodes, you know that I do a lot of blind buys with them. Um, this one was not a blind buy. I originally saw this movie on uh, one of those budget packs, like those horror packs, so like like 20 movies, 50 movies for like 5 bucks or 10 bucks or whatever. Um, I'm talking about Night Train to Terror. Some people love it, some people hate it. I love it. I think it's a lot of fun. Um... It is an anthology horror. It's not one of the best anthology horrors, but it's definitely fun. A rock band gives their final performance on a hellbound trip into the outer reaches of horror. Night Train to Terror. Um, my next one here is a definitely ultra low budget horror fest thing. Uh, I have the, which one is this, uh, the 88 films, Nail Gun Massacre. <laughs> this was definitely a nice obscure one for anybody that doesn't know too much about um, more obscure movies. But it's a fun movie to check out. It is exactly what it sounds like. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a slasher movie with a nail gun. I mean, there's not much else I can say. Um, but... Uh, Hold on, I'm really just trying really quick here to double check because I swear to God that I had I know I know other people probably already know, uh, but yeah, duh, yeah, of course. I don't know why I was blanking. Episode six for um, I do a whole podcast episode with my buddy Adam about Return of the Living Dead. Check out that episode if you want more information. Uh, I, like I said, I also talk about it on uh, my brother's podcast when I do my top five favorite horror movies of 1985. Uh, of 85, no, of all time. Sorry. Top five favorite horror movies of all time. It's really dead. Anyway, uh, back to normal. Anyway, Nail Gun Massacre. Check it out. Uh, super ultra low budget uh, sleaze VHS fest. Uh, Nail Gun Massacre. It's, what else do you need to know? Um, this one... Um, is uh, another honorable mention that I've always really liked this movie, and it was cool um, a few years ago that uh, Screen Factory got it. Um, even on the back it says, Joe Bob says, check it out. So, check it out. Hell Hole. Um, this is definitely a super fun, obscure movie. Uh, captivates, stripped naked, forced to submit to the ultimate experiment. Um, this one, I will read the synopsis really quick. Um, having witnessed her mother's brutal death, Susan gets amnesia from a fall while being pursued by the killer. Silk, is that what it says? Silk? It's been a while since I watched it, sorry. Um, awakened in Ashland San uh, Sanitarium, she is once again terrorized by Silk. Uh... Disguised as the orderly to prey on um, an incriminating secret from Susan's brain. Silk, is that I say Silk? It does. Forms an uneasy alliance with Dr. F uh, Fletcher, a psychotic scientist who has been testing his new laboratory. Um, 
techniques, uh, using helpless inmates to, as her guinea pigs. Uh, these vicious experiments are carried out in the hellhole, torture den awaiting Susan as its next victim. Um, uh, Mary Waranov, I'm, I might be saying her name wrong, of Rock and Roll High School fame, is Dr. Fletcher. So, hellhole. Definitely check it out. I highly recommend that. Um, this one might be a little bit more known. It's not necessarily one of like the top well-known uh, Stephen King adaptations. Um, this has a lot of some of his short stories in it and stuff. I always thought this was definitely a underrated um, anthology or Stephen King really. Uh, Stephen King's Cat's Eye uh, has a has a young Drew Barrymore in there, um, and it's it's a. I think it's a fun anthology horror. Uh, um, let's say Drew Barrymore's in it. Uh, uh, James Woods, Alan King. Um, it is directed by Louis Teagues of uh, Alligator and Cujo fame. Um, but yeah, Cat's Eye. Next up, uh, Life Force from Toby Hooper. Uh, that's a fun one. Um, that's going to be coming out on 4K. That's more like sci-fi horror, but it's fun. Definitely check it out. It's a recommendation for sure. And um, this I originally got from 88 Films and Severin put it out. Severin is the superior one in my opinion. Massacre on Dinosaur Island. It's something else. It's Italian. It's, it's uh, like a weirdo cross between Romancing the Stone and Car Cannibal Ferox. If you're looking for sleazy fun, this is for you. Basically that. Um, and, uh, but I'm pretty sure there are no dinosaurs. <laughs> Alright, so my number one is a movie that is also one of my top favorite movies of all time. It wasn't in my top five, I know, ironically. It wasn't my top ten, though. Um, I'm talking about George A. Romero's Day of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead is one of my top five favorite movies of all time, but if if we're just doing the of the, like the George Romero Dead movies, ah oh man, Day is so close to Dawn for me. Um, if you don't know much about Day, uh, Day is pretty much to the point of all hope is lost, really, and um, Bub is one of the greatest zombies of all time. He is the beginning of the zombies starting to get a little smarter and being able to use things like uh, a precursor to Land of the Dead, of course. Um, but um, I have met Howard Sherman, and he is a sweetheart of a man, as I've said also I, in my Day of the Dead episode. Um, that I did a podcast with my buddy Adam in my earlier episodes. But it's Day of the Dead, man. It's so good. The effects are absolutely amazing because it's Tom Savini, so of course it is. I think the effects are way better than in Dawn of the Dead because Dawn of the Dead was really in the beginning of Tom kind of getting his niche in his work. Um, in this, it's just a full-out gore fest, and it's amazing. And just uh, if you want to hear a lot me talk... Uh, and Adam, my buddy, talk a lot about Day of the Dead. Check out that episode. Um, but yeah, Day of the Dead, number one, 1985, top ten. Um, what else can you say about Day of the Dead? I mean, it's Day of the Dead. So um, anyway, uh, I'm running this monkey farm now, Frankenstein, and I want to know what the fuck are you doing with my time? On that note. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Sorry it was a little junky there a minute ago, I happened to notice. Um, working with a new camera. Trying to work out the kinks. Hopefully all goes well. Um, but anyway, uh, thanks for checking out the video. Um, 1986 will be sooner than later. Uh, sorry this one took so long if you were following along. Um, but yeah, anyway... Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you would like. Uh, check out my other videos and all that fun stuff. Um, but this has been the horror of it all 
Movie Podcast Video Edition. Until next time. <laughs>